for where this church is going. Um, we, got, we are in the midst of a three-month span where we're going to finish this year right. Amen? We're going to finish this year strong. The Lord has pushed this church, pushed us, prophetically pushed us into a space where the folk in this church understand the power of praying and fasting. Yeah, there are some doors that ain't going to open without praying and fasting. And sometimes you got to tell the plate no, sometimes you got to tell the internet no, sometimes you got to tell the telephone no, and sometimes you got to tell your friends no so that you can get into the presence of the Lord because there's nothing like being in God's presence, y'all. Ain't, ain't nothing like, I'm telling you, ah, prayer is such an incredible part of your life. And for those of you who pray out of comfort, that's cool, but when you start praying because you say, God, I don't want to be any, uh, anywhere else but in your presence, you will see God do some extraordinary things. So we had three months, say three months, 
three months to finish up the stuff we didn't do in the first part of the year. Last quarter of the year, October, November, and December. And the Lord gave us three mandates that this year in 24, as we finish up this year, rolling into 25, if we get done what we're supposed to do in the next three months, then we're going to see God open up doors in 25 that we've never seen before. And so the Lord took us through three seasons. The first month, this month is a month of faith. God is going to increase your faith. You want to know why it's time to increase your faith? Because there are some things that you're going to go through in your life that God no longer wants you to sit there trying to, trying to protect what you got. But he wants us to advance our faith. A lot of folks are just living faith to keep. Forget that. I got it. I need faith to take what the enemy tried to steal from my family and my generations. So we're going to be pushing us to advance. On next month, we're going to deal with our families because what we're not going to do is take a whole lot of mess and drama into 25. We're going to deal with our children. We're going to deal with our single lifestyle. We're going to deal with our marriages. And we're going to deal with our friend group. Amen? Because a lot of you are struggling because you got a lot of Jonas on your boat. You got the wrong cats. And you know whenever there is a Jonah on your boat, he will sink the ship. So you need to watch who you are with. Tell somebody say, watch who you're around. Tell them, tell them. Yeah, watch who you are around. You need, to, you need to investigate the character of the people you are around. If you are around a bunch of folk that are gossiping and complaining or that are lazy or that are poor decision makers, they will impact you. And then the last week, we, last month, we're going to deal with our money. Because how many folk know it's a blessing to shout, but it's a whole better blessing when you can shout debt free. Y'all, anybody hear what I'm saying to you? So, so what we're going to do is we're going to get our lives together. We're going to deal with our faith. We're going to deal with our family. And then we're going to deal with our finances. So when we bust into 25, God will be able to do just what he told them in Joshua chapter 3. He says, if you consecrate yourself today, tomorrow, I'm going to do extraordinary things. I am Oh, oh, lift your hands. I am believing that 2025 is going to be the most extraordinary blessed season of our life yet. We're going to see open doors, broke down walls, health healing. Oh, y'all ain't grabbing it yet. Health healing and kept promises. The year that God's going to keep every promise because we lined ourselves in position for God to give birth through what he promised us. Amen. So I'm just declaring 2025 is going to be a year you give birth. Amen? Now, some of y'all were afraid. So we make sure we know that's spiritual. You're going to birth what God said in your life. Y'all ready? Come on, shout and give God a praise offering if you love him. So last week we started this voyage, this, this, this conversation on faith. And we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to take this and we're going to now move into what is the antithesis or the opposite or the rival of faith. We're going to deal with the one thing that has, has been kind of the, the greatest stumbling block to everyone in this room. And we're, going, we're going to deal with your fear. We're going to deal with your fear. Because you can go no further than your capacity to conquer your fear. And the Bible says fear, fear comes with stress, anxiety, worry. Did you know the Bible says that fear is a torment? That means whenever the enemy deals with you, his objective is to cause you to fear, to torment you, because he knows if he can torment you, he can break your concentration off of what God has for you so you can spend your nights, your days, your hours worried and concerned about some impending danger that your mind has drummed up that's going to hit your life. And so if we don't address fear, I want to roll up in 2025, y'all, and I, don't, I want to break every spirit of fear. Because, you know, the Bible says God didn't give you the spirit of fear. So, so, so studies show that 75% of Americans are dealing with some type of stress, anxiety, and fear. What a devil is a liar. Because if God did not give me 
the spirit of fear and I'm fighting the spirit of fear, that means I've given the devil the opportunity to put something in my life that God does not want me to have. And I want to be free. The Bible says he, the son, make you free. That person is what? And I, I'm going to ask the question, what, what would you be if you had no fear? Fear of people's opinions. What do they think about you? Who cares what you think about me? Let me give some give young, young people. I ain't got to my scripture yet. You, you will never get to a free place long as you are concerned about people's opinions of you. You, you cannot get free concerned about, because everybody has an opinion. But I don't care about, listen, you don't like what I wear. I don't care. The only right you have an opinion over my outfit is when you start buying my wardrobe. If you don't buy it, then you better keep your mouth off it. And a lot of people struggle with concern about what do they think about when I walk in the room? What do they think about when I'm talking? Who cares? You, you, you are in the image of God. And so, and so we got to break this. We're going we're gonna to eradicate this spirit of fear. Because I'm telling you, where you're about to go, the enemy is always going to try to bring fear. But I submit to you without a doubt that as you break through these fears, after in the Bible, I noted, after every fear Moses broke through, God gave him a breakthrough. So that means the purpose of the enemy sending the fear was to make Moses stop in his tracks. So we're going to break the spirit of fear. Now, let, let, me, let me go with this quickly because I, I saw something real interesting in the Bible. Did you know that the Bible, we talked about last week, that we talked about the Bible talks about little faith. Remember we talked about that? Who remembers that? If, if you didn't, you need to get the tape. Well, we don't do tape anymore. What do we do? You need to go look online. Amen? So the Bible talks about little faith. Talks about weak faith. I won't go through all of the terminologies. It goes through strong faith, and then it goes through great faith. But did you know something the Bible doesn't talk about? This thing hit me. Do you know the Bible does not talk about no faith? Little faith, weak faith, strong faith, great faith. But nowhere in the Bible does it say no faith. Because Romans 12, 3, let me prove it to you, says God has given to every man what? The let me hear you. Come on, class. Let me hear you. What are you? Everybody has a what? A measure of faith. So you are born. You, you got faith. You came and sat in that seat even though you ate them extra donuts yesterday and you trusted. You trusted the seat was going to hold you, didn't you? You got in your car this morning and drove here trusting your car would take you back. Everybody has a measure of faith. I need you to understand that. Faith is not foreign to you. You have faith. So I want to clarify that. You have faith. The Bible doesn't talk about no faith. Everybody has faith. The issue is, not everybody's faith is in God. See, whenever you're in a hospital and the enemy tries to attack your mind, you have an option to think about, am I going to believe the doctor's report today or am I going to believe God's report? You get the bill in the mail and the bill says that everything's going to either be cut off, taken away, broke away, or it's going to destroy your life. And you look at that bill and you say, do I believe this bill or do I believe that my God shall supply all my needs? You do have faith. You, if, if you didn't have faith, you wouldn't worry. Because your worry is proof that you believe what that enemy told you. Am I making sense to you? So, so you're under the impression, I need faith. No, you got faith. You just got faith in the wrong space. A lot of us are struggling with this. And when I read the Bible, the Bible clearly says that because I got a measure of faith, I've been given faith, it's up to me to decide where I'm going to aim this faith. Let, let me give you the revelation. I'll give you the scripture in just a minute. Um, and I, I've shared a little bit of this, but I think this may hit this thing home. Uh, when, when my, I, oh man, having gone through a father passing in your arms, and then four months later, having been there to see your brother and having him pass, 
and then a few years later, having your other only living sibling pass right in front of you. One of the things the enemy did after my brother John passed, I remember a week later, Elder Bobby, we were going to a meeting for the senior housing. And I'd gotten in the car with somebody and we were driving there. And while we were driving there, I had fasted. I was praying because the whole church, we were all mourning. It's tough when, when one of the, the baddest ministers of music on the, on the planet passed away. And, and he was your minister of music, but he was my brother. And so I remember being in a car driving, and I was driving, I was being driven, and we were going to, I think, we were going to the uh, historical folks to talk about the historical preservation because they wanted us to keep the White House, and we won't go through all the, 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 the nuances of it. But I remember while, while we were driving, all of a sudden, my heart just started racing out of nowhere. My heart just started beating out of no, and, and for a moment, I didn't say anything. You know, you ever, I just tried to stay real calm, just real cool, real calm. And we're getting closer and closer, and my heart just races more and more, and I could feel the heart was beating so heavy that I could feel my heart beating in my hands and my wrist. And so while this is going on, I'm sitting there saying, okay, and so here, here come the old devil. Oh, it's your turn now. See, that, that devil is a trip. He, 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 that PTSD, that's, that, that enemy tried to kick in. Oh, this is your turn. Your brother just passed last week. Your other just brother passed a few years ago. Your father passed. Now it's your turn. And you're going to leave your mother a sunless, a sunless woman. And that enemy, and so all of a sudden, I said, take me back home. Went back home, went to the hospital, went to the hospital. Every time I went to the hospital, when I went to the hospital, they, they put the, 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 the rods on me and they said, your heart is beating at 150 beats a minute and will not slow down. There go that old devil. See, that, that devil is a trip because that, that devil walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. He, he, was, he was trying to play a trick on me. He was saying, and, and, I, and I heard the devil just started talking louder. The harder the heartbeat, the more the devil was speaking. Oh, we got you now. Oh, it's your turn. What are you going to, you going to leave that fine wife to anybody? I said, heart, you better slow down. A devil is a liar. Listen, I'm coming. Listen, I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm coming back in three days if you try to take me out. This, this. No, seriously. The heart, and the heart just kept beating. And then, and then what happened is it would beat. And then every time the doctor would come in the room, it would go up to 175. When the doctor would leave, it would go back to 150. The doctor or nurse would come in with more reports. It would go up to 175. And I'm sitting there and the devil is just talking to me, y'all. Anybody ever had that devil just talk to you? Just, just, just that noise and pestilence telling you, listen, he was telling me, he was saying, I got your brother. He was saying, I got your father. He was saying, I got your other. And now he says, now I'm after you. And I'm sitting there and the devil starts talking to me, telling me that you are not going to be able to get out of this hospital alive. Doctor comes back in again and again and again, and all of a sudden, they start bringing reports. Say, well, we, got to, we need to do more tests. We haven't found anything yet, but we need to do more tests. And the enemy can say, say they're not going to find it in time. I mean, the enemy is creative when you're going through. And then God stops me and says, hold up. Am I not still your father? But, but now I start reasoning with God. But God, you allowed my brothers to go and you allowed them to go. He says, I can't tell you why I let them go. But I need you to release your faith right now. And watch this. I need you to start calling those things that aren't as though they are. So while you're on this hospital bed and while you're being hooked up to all of these leads, I need you to say, I'm healed in the name Lord Jesus. In the name I shall live and not die and declare the glory of God. The devil is a liar and the father of lies. I'm going to walk out of this hospital and be healthy. There will be no demonic attack on my life. I am going to live. And I just kept saying, I said, devil, and I got mad. And listen, at some point, when you start transferring from fear to faith, you get mad. You start, how dare you even put me through this anyway? I done lived too hard, too long for my God, for you to let, it, for the enemy to try to take me out. The devil is a liar. I'm calling you a liar. And the Bible says you're in trouble now because it says if you catch a thief, he got to give you back seven.
seven times what he stole. So not only, devil, am I angry with the fact that you're attacking me, I'm coming to get my vengeance on what you tried to do in my mind. Folks, I'm telling you straight up, the more I see some of y'all, I'm getting to the word, your big issue is you don't talk back. You better start talking back. You talk back to your teacher when you were in school. You talk back to your mama, that's why you got slapped. Now here you are not talking back to the devil. The devil is a liar. I'm a stuff. That's why Jesus had to remind him of his word. You got to keep telling, no, 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 devil. I'm going to live in the name of the Lord. He says he took my infirmities and my diseases on the cross by his stripes. Y'all need to maybe say that last part one more time. I, I think the Holy Ghost needs to hear it one third time for anybody going through anything, whether it's heart issue, whether it's arthritis, whether it's rheumatism, whether you got the gout, you better speak it out of your mouth. Say it with me. I now go ahead and shout like you know that you know that God is able to do exceedingly. Now, I mean, I just, man. oh, and just so you don't know, you, you want to know the end of the story. That was 2005. I think I did all right. I think I'm confirmation that you can talk back the devil using God's faith-filled words. I'm going to say that again. You can talk back the devil using God's faith-filled words. I'm going to say it again. The next time that enemy starts talking in your mind, you need to remind him what God said. Yeah, he said, what? You say, what about my children? Well, I remember David said, I've been young, and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor my seed have to beg bread. Which means, God, not only did you promise to take care of me, you're going to take care of my... You're going to take care of my... You you gonna y'all better you gonna take care of my. They may be disobedient, they may be hard headed, but they covered. They covered by, they covered by my prayer. They covered by the blood. They covered by grace. And I, they they may not know it yet, but God's getting ready to put a hook in their mouth and reel them back in. But my job is to walk by faith until they get their own faith. Come on, sit down. I got some work to do. Sit down, sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please. 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 Sit down. So, so, so now let's, let's rest this here as we move forward. You have the faith you need to win. Where are you going to put your faith? Who you, where are you going to aim your faith? Now, now I got I got got a group of folks here, dear dear, that they're struggling because they say, well, I don't I don't necessarily want to live by faith. Well, then you are antipathetically speaking of, against what God says, because in Romans chapter one verse seventeen, it says, "Baby girl, you can read it. Read it for us. For in for in the righteousness of God uh -huh. is revealed from faith to faith." Can I stop right there? Righteousness means the justice of God. It means the provision of God. It means the hand of God. The word there in the Greek means actually the justice or, or the, in, the, the, the involvement of God. He says, you will not see the involvement of God until you get to a faith season. You will not see the hand of God. You will not know the power of God until you, it's not revealed. It's not seen. You get mad at faith seasons, but faith seasons actually show you who God is. You, you don't know him as Jehovah hyphen Jireh, which means the God that supplies until you in a broke situation. And God says, I need to reveal myself to you as Jehovah Jireh. El Shaddai, the many-breasted one, the God that is more than enough until I get to faith. Faith seasons reveal God's power in my life. Yeah. 
And according to the Bible, baby girl, it says, number one, read what Jesus said. It says, the rights of God is revealed from what? Faith to what? To faith. Say it again. From what? Faith. Say it again. To faith. From what? Faith. Yeah. To faith. The Bible says, in fact, in, in fact, keep reading. Keep reading. And as, as it is written, uh -huh, the, the just, just shall live. live by it faith. says that in Romans 1 17. It says that in Galatians chapter 3 11. It says that in Hebrews 10 38. It says that in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. It's interesting that God says the same thing repetitively. He is trying to tell you that you want to go from easy season to great season to chill season to relax season to no problem season. God says that's not how it goes. You're going to go from faith season to faith season. So stop being upset that your next season put a demand on your faith. The reason is because every time you move to a new season, even a blessed season, the devil always tries to bring fear. So if you try to go to a new season without faith in that season, you will be pushed back because your enemy doesn't want to see you advance. So the Bible says, I need you to understand this because it's really important. You're going to go from faith to faith. So just get it. You're, the, you're in, you are in spiritual warfare. The moment you were born on this earth, the Bible says, David says, I was born in sin. I was shaped by iniquity. You are in warfare. Jesus says, if they don't like me, they ain't going to like you. You were born in the world. The Bible says that the, the enemy raised against, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You got to understand, I need to get it out of your mind that you're going to have this leisure, non-faith life. You're going to have the enemy attack you, but Jesus said you're going to have, he says, he says, you're going to have him attack you, but he says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, for greater is he that is you than he that is in the, so yes, you're going to have to go from faith to faith. I need to tell the Western church to realize that you're going to have a faith situation after a faith situation after a faith situation, but it's how you choose to see it. Because if every faith situation is actually, you should write this down, a breakthrough in disguise. So in essence, what I'm really going through is a breakthrough season to another breakthrough season to another breakthrough season to another breakthrough season, to another breakthrough season, to another breakthrough season, to another breakthrough season. It's not the season, it's my perspective. I've got to stop living this life surprised. Oh my goodness, the devil actually didn't like me this week. You get, you get, you, how, how you go to work on Monday and get surprised that 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 demon lady, whatever it is, I ain't gonna put a name to it. That the diabolical one, she she doesn't come to your she doesn't come to your seat to try to bother you. Why why would you think that that you're gonna live this life without the enemy trying to offset you? But that's why God anticipated that, understood that, and gave you faith. Faith is to make it so that when I'm in a storm, I'm still cool. Jesus, careth thou that we perish? The storm is raging. The winds are beating against the hollow. The boat looks like it's about to capsize. Don't you care that we are about to die? And where is Jesus as they yell out on the top of the boat as his disciples are? Jesus is in the bottom of the boat asleep on a pillow why because when you have faith the storm doesn't matter my faith was already a weather forecast of things to come so when the storm hit me I'm good everybody else upset a thousand can fall at one side ten thousand in my right hand but guess what it's still yeah. For those of you who need me to finish the scripture, it's still not going to come nigh my dwelling. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. 
So therefore, it don't matter what hits my life. I know God is covering me. I'm not a man. I'm not upset about the storm. I was so blessed this week because as a presider of Global, one of the things that I have responsibility for is to check on our churches that are in Florida. So I was so concerned. I was praying. And, and so I got on a Zoom with some of the vice presiders. And I said, listen, we need to release our faith that everyone connected to this fellowship is going to get through this storm unaffected. We prayed. I said, God, I trust you. God, I believe you. I got a report on last night from Bishop Thomas, vice presider, and he says, guess what? Check with every Global United Church in Florida. An enemy may have swooped in, but he couldn't touch the anointed. Every building, every person, every place is, is untouched. Man, you know what that's doing to my faith? Don't y'all, I'm telling y'all, next time it storms, I might just step out and say, you know what, peace. Oh, y'all got this thing too, y'all. Y'all y'all got this thing, y'all got this thing too. Come on, sit down, sit down. You better start talking your faith. You better start talking your faith. So if I know I got to live by faith, now watch this because it's really important. Why, why most, okay, whoo, yeah, I'm going to say it the way you told me, Jesus, okay. You know why most of our fear is fear? Your, your reason you're, you're afraid is because you, 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 we, the, the greatest attack we'll go through is we, we really are afraid of losing stuff. If you think of all the things you've really been concerned about, fear of losing your health, fear, fear of losing your family member, fear of losing your house, fear of losing your job, Fear, fear of losing your prestige, fear, fear of losing other people's respect for you, how they feel about you. you. You don't realize how we live our life just gripping on to stuff, trying to hold on to stuff because we are so afraid we're going to lose it. I'm a, I'm a, and, and you wake up all night. If you think about what you woke up the last few nights about, it was a fear of losing something. Just afraid of losing. Afraid, afraid, afraid to, and, and, and what, what you don't realize is if it's for you, God ain't going to let it go nowhere. But watch this. Sometimes it ain't for you. But if it gets taken away, God's got better. You, you may be holding on to Ishmael and God's trying to give you Isaac. And you all mad because Ishmael out here acting up, unemployed, all man boy, walking around like pretty boy Floyd when God's got greater. You up here holding on to something that God may say, let it go. Let, let, let it go. Sometimes, sometimes, because this is what I'm going I'm to show you, some, I'm gonna show you some, some science. Do you know, do you realize that, that holding on to something or, or, or the, 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 the fear in your mind, just the fear itself, by itself, is so damaging to your brain, it's more damaging to fear than it is to let it go. Let me show you something scientifically. Watch this. Repeated stress is a major trigger to persistent inflammation in, your bo in the body. Chronic inflammation can cause a range of health problems, including diabetes and heart disease. That sugar ain't because of the Twinkie, it's because of the stress. Now, the Twinkie exacerbated it. But it's because of the stress. There's, I was reading a book, my favorite book, Change or Die, and it talked about a place in, in, in Ireland where the people live to 118 years old. And they eat everything. They eat the whole pig from the rooty to the tootie. <laughs> Hog jaws, pig feet, chitlins, which is, I did not know. I did not know, just side note. Mitch, I didn't, nobody told me when my father, he, he, he's from, he was from North Carolina, his, my father's name, I mean, just so you know, my father was from um, Roanoke, North Carolina, his name, his, when you go back to North Carolina, we call him dad, y'all would call him pastor back then, 
My mama called him Jimmy. His nickname in North Carolina was Ham. Now, how many people there are not too many vegans named It messed me up because my father would always have pig feet and always have chitlins. I love the chitlins. Look, chitlins, he put the chitlins in the butter after they cleaned them and then they put them in the, uh, in the vinegar and they, they sauce them things up real nicely and great. And, and it wasn't until... he had to clean them so well. Why you got to take an hour and a half cleaning the chitlins? What you cleaning out? It wasn't until I was sitting there with my brothers and they said, you, you know where the chitlin come from, right? I said, it come from the chit. They said, no. The chitlin connected to the anus is a digestive tract of the pig, which means all the fecal matter, they didn't say fecal, I'm using very scientific terms, that is not what they said, is funneled through the chick, through the tube. So what you're actually eating is the part of the chick, the part of the pig that held the poop. Mark, you on target, boy. I love you. <laughs> you ever had something that you thought tasted good, and while you're chewing it, and they tell you what it is, and all of a sudden, it's just the whole taste changes? Come on, let's get back to the church. I don't even know where I was. Yeah, so, so, so watch this. So my inflammation in the body is more called, do you realize that they say people that smoke cigarettes, they usually will die seven to eight years early. And it will affect the 10 years before the death. But did you know that stress affects people 20 years and five times worse than smoking 10 packs of cigarettes a day? The devil is a lie. Touch somebody and say, I'm going to be free. Yeah, to say it again. Say it with your chest. Say, I'm going to be free. The amygdala, which processes the growth in size, while the, hippo the hippocampus, which stores memories. Watch this. Impaired functioning of the frontal cortex and the hippocampus may not function as well, which in many people, it's harder to think through situations and make decisions. Chronic stress and anxiety increase the risk of neuropsychiatric disorders like depression and dementia. Brain fog, durable memories. Brain fog meaning difficult to think under pressure and focus, durable memories, which means when, when you're struggling with a great deal of stress, it will impair your capacity to think and have total recall. Man, it's, it's, it would have been better to let, let the car go. It, it, it would have been better to let Jeffrey go. It, it, it would have been better, better to, to, to release and let it go than for it to impair me for the next 30 years of my life. At least if I let it go, I could instantly jump into recovery mode. I could instantly start repairing the stuff that was broken from it. I could start rebuilding what I lost. But, but if I hold on to this stress, I start losing me. So I'm not even good to rebuild it because I never got to rebuild anything because I was too broken holding on to it. Sometimes you just got 
to live and say, you know what? No matter what, though he slay me, I'm still going to praise him. It don't matter what hits my life. I'm going to have joy despite it. If I go to work and you talk to me, I'm going to talk back. If you go to work and you ignore me, I'm going to still have my joy. I'm not going to fight my life and destroy my health trying to keep everything together. Sometimes I need to rest in him. Somebody got a breakthrough right there in the name Lord Jesus because you've been wrestling with that thought. Baby, go to sleep because guess what? The last 20 times you stayed up worried about it, not one time did it get fixed. It ain't going to be fixed on 21, but you know what you can do? You can get a good night's sleep and while you're asleep, God can give you a witty invention and give you an idea. Detach. Detach from the stuff that's trying to kill you. That was a word right there. I don't know who, I don't know who got that. I don't know who got that. I don't know who got that. Y'all stressed and angry and upset. Y'all moody and everything. The enemy's trying to attack your body. Uncle Arthur keep trying to visit you all the time. The devil is a liar. I'm going to live my life to the best. I'm going to give God the glory. I am not going to let the stress overwhelm me. What I can fix, I will fix. What I can't fix, that's a faith. But what I'm not going to do is try to be Holy Ghost Junior and fix everything myself. There are some things I got to stand steadfast and see the salvation. Because just like persistent fear causes illness, persistent faith causes healing. Just as consistent fear has caused illness in the body, has caused stress, has caused anger, if you are persistently walking by faith, you're going to see God do things in your life that are extraordinary. Now, let me give you the revelation because it's really important. Well, Bishop, you keep talking about faith. How does my faith work? Let me, let me tell you how faith works. I saw this. Maybe can you read this? Because first, let me show you Hebrews 11. Because somebody keeps saying, um, how, do I, how do I prove faith? Because anybody believe in something and you don't have proof for it? Let me, let me see a hand. Let me see. You, you believe in God for something, but, but there's no tangible proof. You, you, you believe in God to take you to a place as an entrepreneur, but there's no tangible proof. You believe in God to restore something in your life, but there's no tangible proof. You're, you're seeing yourself out there being used by God, but there's no tangible proof. You see yourself moving out of where you are into something better, but there's no tangible proof. I need to understand, if, you're, if I'm telling you to trust God, hello, hello. what is the proof that my faith is going to work? Can you read that first baby girl out of Hebrews right there for me, baby? Now, faith. Okay, okay, keep going. Is the assurance. Yeah. The title. No, 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 where are you? No, 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 go to, no, the, Hebrews is the first one, baby. Now, faith. Yeah, Hebrews, yeah. Is the substance of things. That's what I want, that's what I want, keep going. The evidence of things not seen. Read that one more time. Now, faith. Okay, y'all know it. Come on, class, say it with me. Now. Now. Is the what? Substance. What is faith's evidence? Things I haven't seen. Okay. Watch CSI. They want to know who stole the gold, who broke into the vault. One of the things they do is they do forensic evidence. They want to find DNA and they want to find fingerprints. They go with all this stuff, they start powdering it down, and then they go and they look at the microscope, they look at, they look at the magnifying glass, and they say, okay, I see the fingerprints, they take the fingerprints, they match it up, say, now we have evidence of who stole it. I've got the DNA, i got a hair strand, I take the hair strand, pop it out, I put it in a little machine, I'm able to look at it, now I'm looking down in the microscope, okay, I can see that, we can match this up with the person's samples that we got, I got evidence. I can see now, okay, this matches that same person. Therefore, I have evidence. Now, now, so they go to court and they say, you know, we have irrefutable evidence that it was this person. How do you know? Because we have their fingerprints and we have the hair. But now I got to ask a question. So now you're telling me that I need evidence in order to believe something. I need fingerprints. I need DNA samples. What is my proof? That the thing you're trusting God for right now is going to materialize. 
Watch this. The proof that the thing you have faith for is going to materialize is the fact that you have faith. Well, you said it. You said it. Hallelujah. It goes back to the faith. Okay, you're not hearing me. My faith is the proof. How do you know? Because I have faith for it. How, what, is your, what, is your, what is your empirical evidence? My faith. How do you know it? My faith is the fingerprints. My faith is the DNA. My faith, because God gave me faith for it, my faith tells me that I have proof that what I'm believing God for will come to pass. In fact, let me show you how powerful your faith is. Would you please read the same scripture in the Amplified Version? Now faith Watch this. is the assurance. Faith, faith is the what? The assurance. Oh, y'all, come on, class, with me. Faith is the what? Assurance. Come on, class. Faith is the what? The assurance. What is assurance? That is, I'm assured of it. How am I? I'm assured of it because of the faith. Yes. The faith assures it. Keep going, baby. The title. The faith is what? The title. Oh no, no, you got to read that whole thing together. Read it one more time. Now faith now is the assurance. Now faith is the assurance. All right, which is the, the title. D the D confirmation. The confirmation. Read again. Faith is the assurance. What is the assurance? The title, title. the deed, and the and the confirmation. What is my faith? Faith. What is a title and what is a deed? When you buy a house and you pay that house off, they give you the deed and they give you the title. That is the ownership. What is the ownership? Of the thing I'm believing for. My faith. Mercy. My, my faith. My, my faith. My, my faith is the proof. My, my faith is the assurance. My, my faith is the confirmation. It's, it's my faith. So, so let me, let me, I'm going to end this and next week I'm going to finish this because I think I, I think I need to. So let me let me let's rewind the clock a little bit, rewind. and tell you how this works. Rewind. It was around 2013. Uh -huh. Y'alls were not in here's. Okay. <laughs> we were not in here. It was 2013. We were shouting and jumping and screaming in Eleanor Roosevelt High School. <laughs> Y'all having way too much fun. Y'all yeah. were running and, and jumping and shouting in Eleanor Roosevelt Health. If you play the video, you can, if you can play it, it's fine. But just play it in, in silent mode. But watch this. This is important. So y'all are shouting and y'all y'all got them hard seats so you the glory was in the house because y'all ain't want to sit down. And they had them seats, like the theater seats, that when they pop up and pop down, but they were wood. They weren't cushy. So they were wood seats that pop up. And so some of y'all would miss the seat. And... <laughs> I was seeing what was happening. <laughs> they, the floors didn't have carpet. If you notice, the carpet was only at the front. The floors were actually cement floors all the way back. So not only did you have hard seats, you had hard floors. But y'all were shouting like y'all were back in the blue church. Yes. Watch this. 13. 13. I got a call from the Washington Post. Washington Post said, hey, I need to get an understanding. I need, I need, I need, I need to get a word from you. What, what, what's Washington, Washington, what you want, Washington Post? Say, listen, we need to understand. It says, it says in, in, in a couple of days, they're going to install a new pastor in Jericho. Sure did. Sure did. And they said, they said not only that, watch this now. They said some of the largest... Some of the largest well-known prominent preachers in the land are going to come and help install. Yep. And and I and we want to get we want to so so and we want to get your word on what you think about what's going to happen. Remember, I said that's the fear of losing. So so not only are you kicked out. They're going to stamp this kick out because they're going to install somebody in this pulpit. 
Please know, this is not my pulpit. This, this, I dare try to take God's glory. This, this, this house was built by the grace and glory of God. This pulpit carries the grace and glory of God. And no man shall ever glory in his sight. We got to make sure we know this is God's house. This is God's work. This is God's mission. You ain't my people. Y'all God's people. In fact, we all God's people together. That ain't my choir. That's God's choir. That ain't our prayer. That, is this, this, this is God's work. So when they called me and they asked, how do you feel about it? I love that. that's, that's where your faith, because not only, because the evidence in the fact looked like all hope was lost. Yes, sir. That's why you got to make sure yes, you do sir. not walk by fact, but by faith. Yes, sir. Because there's going to come a time that the facts will not be in your favor and you're going to have to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and let him direct your because it's not going to look the way you want it to look in the fact the fact may look like your body is sick but the truth is your God is a healer the fact may look like you're broke but you want to thank God in advance because my God shall supply all my Every Christian will have to come to a place in his or her life that they're going to have to make a decision or do I believe the facts or am I going to walk by? <laughs> Washington Post wants to know how you feel about it. I got all this evidence. Yes, I've been kicked out. I've had, I've, had, I've had legal suits that were against us. I've had, I've, had, I've had people do just the most mischievous stuff. We, are, we have sealed in our hearts the stuff that was done to us because our job is to protect the church, not to be a part of defighting and, def and breaking the church. So we are, we are protecting people. We are protecting others because of what took place. But, and it was hard to do that because that was our assignment. Our assignment was not Joe Peebles and Yolanda Peebles get back to the church. It is protect the body of Christ and show righteousness in the middle of what looks like earthly hell. And if you do my job, then I reward you faithfully. And so, and so we were in this thing. So what are you going to say? Here's what I said. Remember, it's faith and fact. I told them, I told, it's what I told them. It's, it's in the Washington Post. You can go back and look. I said, I said, everything, I love them, but everything that is happening there will eventually be reversed. <laughs> All the facts look the opposite. All the optics look the opposite. All of the pressure was against us. Everything looked like it was impossible, but I had just a hope in God. He said, hope thou in God. I was going to trust God so much that God, it don't matter what it looks like, I know you're going to keep your word what you spoke in my life. Sometimes when all the facts look the opposite, you got to hold on to a word. You got a child acting up, God told you that he was going to restore them and bless them. Hold on. Old folks used to say, hold on to God's unchanging you better hold on to what God showed you. You better keep, re I kept replaying us coming back home. I kept seeing it coming back home. I came back to you Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and said, we going back home. I spoke it again and again and again and again despite all the tax. And you know what happened? They did, listen, here's the next scene. All of y'all are sending me videos of a person being in this pulpit, standing right here, being draped, having all the prominence around them. And at that point, I said, God, it seems like the world is against us. But if you be for us, if you be for us, if God be for you, it's more than everything else against you. So God wanted to ask me a question. That was my faith. He wanted to know, do you still believe? I got to believe you beyond what a court said. I got to believe you beyond the empirical evidence I have. I've even got to believe you beyond what I see happening right now. 
And God says, keep, give, keep loving, keep paying, sowing your seed. Sowing, sowing your seed because you, you got to make sure if you believe God, you got to keep declaring the Lord, we're going to get back. So I'm still tithing. I'm still giving. I'm still believing. I'm still trusting. I'm still giving. I'm still tithing. In the midst of everything, we, we're in a situation where, where we, we have so much lack, but I'm still trusting God. And you know what God does? God says, I just want to see, did you trust me? I, I just want to know, do you trust? Will, will, when everything looks lost, will you be that one that say, God, I still believe. God, I still know you're faithful. Washington Post, this is the last words. I said, we will be And then I left the how to God. Because I don't always know. I left the how to God. Because I'm trying to calculate it. And I'm telling you right now, part of the issue against your faith is you keep trying to figure out how. You're not going to figure out how. Leave the how to God. Your faith has to grow to leave the how. God, this is your church. This ain't my church. God, this is your promise. This ain't my promise. God, you showed me something. You showed me and you told me that when I have a vision from you, no devil in hell can steal it away from me. I trust in the Lord. I believe I receive when I pray. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep going back in worship. I'm going to keep going back in giving. I'm going to keep going back in praising. I'm going to keep going back in being obedient. Watch this. I'm even going to keep going back and loving those that had they had a knife in their hand would stab me in the back ten times. But I'm going to love them too. Because when you turn your hand, everybody's going to see that my God is able. I need you to stand up because I can't finish this. But I need you to hear without a shadow of a doubt that your faith is going to see you through what you are struggling with. How how you going to do it, God? That ain't up to you. That, that, that ain't up to you. Miracles come when you don't know the how. Elijah, I'm going to take you by a brook where there's no food, I'm gonna take you by a brook and I'm gonna take you by a brook in a famine season where there's no food and there's no water and I'm gonna, I'm gonna summons a raven. And the raven is gonna eat on one side, bring it to you and give it back to you, regurgitate, back, regurgitate it back to you. I'm gonna feed you out of a raven's mouth. I don't know how. Stop trying to figure out how. It ain't up to you to know how. This, this ain't your battle. You just got to trust. Oh, heat up. I see your faith increasing right now. Now, now this, is why, this is why this is so important. It's time we stop. We stop. It's time we stop having faith just to hold on to stuff. We're here having faith just to hold on. I got to hold on to it. Hold on. Th listen, that'll wear you out. Stop having faith to, and start having faith to advance. Lord, I see myself now building more. I see myself now growing. Lord, I see myself moving forward. I'm not going to cry anymore trying to hold on to anything. I'm going to trust you, Father. You know more than me. Maybe I got to let something go to get something better. But what I'm not going to do is, watch this. What I'm not going to do is terminate my life 15 years early because I stress myself to death. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Doubt comes by hearing, hearing the enemy's word. I'm going to start infusing myself around faith people. So now I'm picking faith people around me. I need faith people. I need, I need, I need, I need water walking Christians. I need, I need folk that trust God. 
So I'm going to get all those naysayers out of my way. I'm going to get all those folks that don't believe. And I'm going to start putting people around me that believe that God can do anything but fail. I, I, see, I, see, I see faith being deposited in this place like never before. Faith, faith to advance. Faith, faith to get it done. Faith, faith to move some mountains that have been in your family for a long, long time. Faith, faith to break out of some molds. Faith, I, I see your faith growing. My evidence is because he showed me. I believe. Do you, do you know, lift up your hands. Do you know the issue with prayer is prayer must be connected with belief. I got to believe I receive when I pray and refuse it. I got to believe I receive when I pray. I got to believe I receive. The moment I pray, I believe it's done. And so when you get up off your knees, you got to act like God done already rewarded you with what you asked for. You, you, you're waiting for the physical. But, but remember, we walk by and not by so I'm not waiting to see it. I'm already shouting because God told me and I'm going to trust what he said. And, and watch this. If it ain't never happened before, if what I'm believing God for, you, you know, y'all need to read your church history. You, this ain't never happened before in history of church. I'm never going to leave this because this us being back here it is the only time in the church history where people like us were pushed out of a place where the law came against them, where all of the relationships that were had outside of us were, were, were being forged against us, where, where it seemed like the judicial system was against us. And we got no after no after no after no. This is the first time in church history. Before the Dark Ages, before the Middle Ages, this is the only place in church history that we fought, we won, and we returned. You sit in a seat where miracles happen. You, you're sitting, let's say, you're sitting in a place of recovery. That, that you're sitting in confirmation. This is confirmation that whatever the devil thought he had, he only had for a season. That what God promised me, I am standing in a place where God proves us that he recovers that which the enemy stole. Oh, I don't know if I have a church in the house. I don't know if y'all feel it, but I'm telling you right now, in the name of Lord Jesus, May the power of recovery hit this house. May everything from joy, from peace, from property, from love, from grace that the enemy stole through stress and through worry and through concern. May the Holy Ghost of God bring it back to your life right now. May God give you more than you ever lost and give it back to you a hundredfold return. In the name, Lord Jesus. Now, before I praise, I can't give my ordinary praise because I got to praise him with my faith. I got to praise him with my faith. So I need to know if you trust him and you believe him, would you take one moment and give God a faith praise? Release your faith in here. Release your faith in here. Release it right now. Release your faith. Release it. Release your faith. Release it right now in the atmosphere. Release your faith. Release it right now in the name of Lord Jesus. Father, I release my faith. I release my faith over my family. Over my family. Over my finances. I release my faith. Right now. Right now. Come on, open up your mouth and give God glory. I release it right now. Right now. So, if you're standing next to somebody you know, put your hand on their shoulder. If you're standing next to somebody you know. Tell them you ain't got to do this. 
by yourself. Say it again. Say, you're not doing this by yourself. Come here, girl. Tell them, you're not doing this by yourself. Say, I'm going to release my faith for you. There have been some blockages. Mm, my God. There have been some blockages. That, tell them, there have been some holdups in your life. There have been some setbacks in your life. There have been some things that have not yet been released. But say, in the name of Lord Jesus, my job is to pray you through. My job, no, say it like this, say, I have an assignment. I'm sitting here today because God told me to push your faith into your next season. After the day, the enemy you saw, you will never see again. <laughs> Ooh, glory. So in the name, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy, your releasing power. I thank you, Father, for your salvation power. Break the enemies back in their life. Break the enemy's stronghold. Every mental stronghold, every physical stronghold, every relationship stronghold, every financial stronghold, every purpose-driven stronghold. Father, break it right now. I speak over this person. I speak health. I speak healing. I speak grace. I speak mercy. I speak power. I speak authority over their life right now. And Satan, I serve you notice your hands cannot touch them anymore. They are covered by the blood of Jesus. And Satan, the blood of Jesus, rebuke you. So right now, Father, I celebrate for my neighbor's breakthrough. I celebrate for their life. One, two, three, somebody give... I see it. 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 I don't know who I'm. I see it. I see it. I see it. I, tell somebody I see it for you. Tell them. Tell them I see it working for you. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Who, who am I? I see it in the name. I see it. I see it. I see it. You are not alone. You are not fighting alone and you are not alone. You are not alone. I know it feels sometimes that you are trapped in your own thoughts. But you are not by yourself. God's grace and mercy and love for you is the same grace and mercy that has kept you up to now. You just didn't always recognize it because you kept struggling with fear. But we're going to faith our way through. We're no longer going to let the enemies, I will submit to you finally. You're going to hear me say this a million times. Never give the enemy the last word. I feel seasons everywhere, and I see blessings in the air, those seeds that you sow, they're going to come into your own seasons, walk into your seasons. Ah, help me out, church. Yeah. 
and I and I woo. blessings blessings in the air. those seeds they're gonna come back seasons every head by every eye closed somebody's getting ready to be pushed into a brand new season and the season that God has for you is a season of greater relationship filled with greater re revelation greater clarity and greater victories but it comes with a relationship and it comes with a conversation but you saying I'm willing to step out of where I am so that God can do everything he designed to do in my life. Seasons walk into every head bowed. Listen, you're in this place and God has something in store for you. But it's going to take, it's going to take, you're giving your all to him. You're in this room and God has so much for you, but you're going to have to give him all of you. When I count to three and you know you need a better relationship with Christ, it's just time. It's just time. You need a better relationship with Jesus Christ. When I count to three, be honest and lift your hands up. One, two, three. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see you. I need a better relationship. I need a better. I need a better. And, and, and listen, part of this is breaking the fear. Because fear, fear wants me to stay in my seat. Fear wants me captive. I see your hands. The other person, I got a good relationship, but preacher, I'm hurt. I'm broken. I'm in a tough season in my life, and I'm struggling. Because people have wounded me and hurt me. And I need to be free. You're in this room, and you need to be free because of the hurt and wounds you've gone through. When I count the three, I need you to lift your hands up. One, two, three. Lift your hands up. I'm struggling. I'm hurt. I'm broken. Lift your hands up. I see you. The last person you say, preacher, I'm just tired. I'm worn out. Co-pastor, come here. Oh, I'm, I'm worn out. I'm tired. Come here, co-pastor. I'm worn out and I'm tired. I'm struggling. And I'm tired because I'm, I'm in a place where I, I've tried so hard and I need God to help me. And some of you, you, you've gone through seasons where you don't know God even notices you. You feel sometimes unseen. You feel as though people haven't seen the struggle and the strain you've gone through. I need you to know God sees you. God sees you. You're in this room and you say, I need prayer for strength. When I count to three, lift your hands up. One, two, three. I need prayer for strength. Where's your hands? I need your hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, very good. Every hand is lifted. I need you to hold your head up and boldly come down here and join us. I need y'all to clap. Don't think twice. Because all my life, you have been faithful in all my life you have been so so good with every breath I am able I will say of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh.
Hey, family. Can you celebrate for these incredible young adults? Give God a hand clap for them. Oh, you got to clap your hands longer than that, harder than that, more than that. Look who you got. You got a cutie. So, so co-pastor, check this out. You see how many young faces there are? It's like so many young faces. So all of you under the age of 35, lift your hands up real quick. Lift your hands up, both hands. Under 35, lift your hands up. Yeah. The real 30, the real ones. I need to say something to you all. You all are not next, you're now. You're not next, you're now. God has so much in store for your life. This world needs you. That's why you've been under so much attack. Because the enemy is so afraid that your freedom, your, your being free and not connected to the culture, which is trying to wear you down, that freedom in your life is going to cause you to be so strong that you're going to be leaders amongst people that were followers. That God is getting ready to elevate you like you never saw because he's going to put, like I showed this young man, he's going to put a new word in your mouth that's going to now push you to new levels. Do not be afraid of being sold out. The season to compromise is over because the world is looking for something authentic and real. Someone that devotes themselves to God, that prays, that has relationship with other young adults, and someone that can lead this next generation out of what is getting ready to be the most difficult generation the most difficult season this country has ever seen. So I need you to prepare yourself because you are the one that the grace is going to be on to lead us through. In the name of Lord Jesus. I need everybody to join them and lift their hands. Repeat after me. Today, we break the spirit of fear. Fear will no longer run rampant in our life. From here on, we thank God for freedom. Anxiety is broken. Depression is broken. Worry and stress will no longer have a place in my life. Today, I cast all of my care on the Lord. When I leave this house, I'm leaving my stress. I'm leaving my anxiety and I'm leaving my worry. And I'm picking up righteousness, peace, and joy in the name of Lord Jesus. So I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my joy. I give him my life. He died so I could have peace. And he rose so I can live in peace. In the name of Lord Jesus, I forgive every person that tried to break my peace, steal my peace, or sabotage my peace. I release them. I hold them harmless. Baptize me with fire. In the name of Lord Jesus, so be it. A to the man. Man, if I were you, I'd be clapping. Daughter, if I were you, I'd be clapping. Oh, I'd be clapping, I'd be clapping, oh, I'd be clapping, oh, I'd be clapping. Family, listen, y'all don't have to do this alone. We in this together. Right now, there's, I think they have teen church going on right now, right? Teen, tween, and children. So we have teen, tween, and children church that are going on right now in other auditoriums, and those rooms, I understand, are packed out. So what I am sharing with you is, make sure that you are connected to this church. Men's ministry on Thursday night, my brothers, please be a part of it. Make sure you're connected to what this ministry is doing. Women's ministry, please make sure you do it. Marriage, listen, whether you're married or considering married, the good thing about marriage class, it'll do one or two things. It'll either keep, if, you, if you're single and you're, you're a spouse and you're dating someone, marriage class will either keep you together or it'll break you up and both are good. Can I get an amen from somebody? 
So please, I beg young adults, go to marriage class if you're with somebody. Okay, make sure you go. Make sure you connect. Make sure, ladies, you join the women, uh, the kingdom queens. Be, be a part, be a part of something bigger than yourself. This ministry is here. May God cover you. May God keep you. May God allow the best part of your life to begin today. That the 13th of November will show the sign of the day that you became what God ordained. In the name of Lord Jesus, so be it. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God a hand.